and he wants to take over the world and he still does want to take over the world and of course when I was a leader in the Moonies I would run into recruiters like Nancy uh, and think oh Scientology what a cult and people like Nancy would run into people like me or in the Krishnas or something going wow those people are really in cults and as Nancy was just mentioning me before this is the first time I got a chance to meet her she said uh, I didn't realize I was in a cult until I read this book by this ex Mooney. Uh, and I read it, I was like, holy mackerel, this is all about my experience, even though he's writing about the Moonies and other cults. And I said, which book was that? He said, she said, it was the book by the guy who broke his leg. And I said, oh, that's my book. Because <laughs> I fell asleep at the wheel of a Mooney van and broke my leg, and that's how my family found me, and that's how they did an intervention with me and that's where I learned about brainwashing and mind control and the fact that it exists and um, and I understood what I did as a leader to recruit people into the Moonies and indoctrinate them through all their workshops and when I first got out and went on national television I felt incredibly guilty over all the people I had recruited into the Moonies I had helped the Moon get a foothold in the US I started meeting ex-Scientologists and they started filling me in on what was really going on inside. I got to meet uh, Paulette Cooper who wrote the first wow. book, Critical, of L. Ron Hubbard. Nice. Yeah. And how they literally espionage broke into her apartment, typed a bomb threat to Scientology on her typewriter in order to try to get her arrested. She was arrested and almost sent to jail for something that they manufactured. And indeed, you know, they do place people inside of government entities in order to spy, in order to lobby, in order to uh, destroy uh, information that people are submitting in order to manipulate and control. So I did write this piece saying it's time to end Scientology's tax exemption, and I frankly think many other cults should lose their tax exemption status too. We should stop supporting their uh, their work to enslave people and undermine the uh, United States as well as free people all over the world. Um, and I've been doing this work for 35 years because I am absolutely convinced that unless people like Anonymous and the general public understands the fact that these groups exist and they're trying to take over. They're trying to take over person by person. They're trying to take over institution by institution. And unless we can create a grassroots movement, I'm afraid the Obama administration is not going to do a darn thing because they have too many lobbyists, too many powerful forces lobbying. If we can create a viral internet ground roots movement, if more former members can speak out, if more people who've seen loved ones whose lives have been destroyed speak out, then we can, we can do something. I really believe we can get the tax exemption taken away and then we can move on to the Moonies and other groups like that. And frankly, I think uh, people like David Miscavige should be put in jail. And in talking with Jerry Armstrong, who's one of my personal heroes, he was saying, Steve, there's this law, human rights law, uh, statute 18, 241, that says any conspiracy to deprive people of their human rights, punishable by fine and up to 10 years in jail. And who better than David Miscavige to fit that? criteria. So um, when I was asked would I come and add my voice, absolutely. Um, but I want to try to just take two minutes more and just say that brainwashing and mind control exists. There is such a thing as hypnosis and I believe the communications course and the TRs and many other techniques in Scientology are in fact using hypnosis. I don't know how many people knew that Hubbard was a stage hypnotist before, but it, in my professional opinion, it's absolutely using hypnotic techniques and methods. And from my research and talking with former military intelligence officials who were, who were basically in the 50s told, find out what communist brainwashing is. They outlined criteria that anyone could be, look through the criteria. Robert J. Lifton was one. He had eight criteria. Margaret Singer has six conditions of mind control. 
and I basically took their two models and I altered it and I took Festinger's cognitive dissonance theory which talks about the thoughts, feelings and behaviors and if you can control one you can manipulate the other two to reduce dissonance and fall in line. I took that that model and the added information control and I created what's called the bite model of mind control and it's on my website at freedomofmind.com it's in my books the B stands for controlling people's behavior the I stands for controlling their information T stands for controlling their thoughts and E stands for controlling their emotions and 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 within those four components there are sub variables like controlling sleep controlling food controlling clothing controlling names, getting permission, rewards and punishment, all designed to create dependency and obedience. And so you can literally go through the bite model and apply it to any relationship or family, dysfunctional family system or political cult, therapy cult, business cult, religious cult, because it's a behavioral model. It's not looking at weird beliefs about space aliens it's looking at what practical beliefs are being used to deprive people of their free will to not let them have informed consent in other words to use deception to get them involved in an incremental way and to, and to sequentially destroy their identity and their relationship with their family and their relationship to their goals whether it's educational goals or creative goals and create a new cult identity that's in the image of the leader that's dependent and obedient on this authoritarian structure. And I see this pattern over and over again. I've counseled people for over 35 years all over the world. And as Larry mentioned, like 60 minutes flew me to Japan after the uh, sarin gassing of the Om Shinriko cult. Do you remember that one? Where, where the leader Shoko Asahara claimed to be Buddha and Jesus. And he, he ordered his followers to sarin gas people in the subway and literally shot the head of, of Japan's police department in the chest. Uh, so I was flown over for that. I've been on every major talk show. But again, it's like the, the public is like anesthetized to this the reality that psychology can be used to help and empower people and overcome addictions and overcome all kinds of personal problems. And psychology can be used in quite a systematic way to deconstruct a person's identity and enslave them. And I believe that in every educational institution, people should be taught social psychology. They should be taught how to be a good consumer, how to ask questions, critical questions. And if they're ever in a situation